Your band's names are a bit unusual. Is there any story behind them? Um, well, ours, uh, yeah, I was just kind of silly. Like, we were kind of just going for, like, a space theme kind of thing when we started out. So we were looking at, like, science terms and physics terms, and we stumbled upon uh, this, you know, term of axiom. And so we kind of looked it up. We're like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. You know, nobody, we don't have any bands or, that we know of that have that name. So we kind of looked it up and uh, found that there actually was. So we kind of made a joke like, oh, let's just like steal that band name, like stealing Axiom, you know, kind of. And it just kind of stuck. And then we just kind of like pretentiously gave it like some cool definition, like, oh, we steal an Axiom. And then the Adam, you know, the Adam I didn't collapses. even know that somehow. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> what about you guys? Seven horns, seven eyes. Well, I've answered this question a million times, and I'm happy to answer it again. Uh, we're all Christian guys, so it comes from the book of Revelation in the Bible. Um, throughout the Bible, the number seven is used to uh, describe, like, completeness or perfection. And so, in Revelation, it describes Jesus as looking like a lamb who was slain. It's kind of this cool metal-looking, scary image. And so the seven horns represent um, that he is all-powerful, and the seven eyes that he is all seen. So... It's mostly just a statement about the nature of God more than anything else. And, uh, so that resonates with us on a spiritual level, and then also, um, you know, just it's a cool looking image that we can tie into metal and, and, and metal. Band, so that's our name. You just got back from the dual destruction tour across the U.S. West Coast. What was that experience like? So this one first, I suppose, instead of putting you on the spot every time. Yeah, sure. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. I will say that. Um, you know, didn't didn't spill a bunch of money. You know, didn't lose tons of money coming out of it. So that's that's good. That's really important. You know, so doing a, a headlining tour as a young band like this, you know, we didn't we didn't really know how it was going to come out. So coming back, not losing money, is really awesome. Um, played some cool shows. Been to lots of cities we've never been to before. Uh, you know, some ups and downs, some really great shows, and then some shows that, uh, didn't well, actually one show, yeah, that didn't <laughs> even happen, period. Two shows, I guess. Yeah. But one, one show we already drove to, we already showed up to the town, to the venue, only to then determine that it was no longer worth playing the show. Right. So that, that was a bummer, but, you know, I mean, I guess it's kind of to be expected for the position that we're in right now. We're both young bands, both... You know, trying to trying to grow, trying to make something of this. So I think considering that though, like things turned out pretty good. Yeah. You know, I yeah. I thought there was gonna be a lot less people at the shows than there were. Yeah. I thought we were gonna sell a lot less merch than we did. Um, yeah. So overall, like it could have gone so much worse. That's true. But it was yeah. it was really fun. Like I enjoyed hanging out with you guys, and like you know, we loved all the fans that came out and talked to us and got to know us and stuff. And that intimate kind of uh, environment, since we only played for you know, not not like. A tiny amount of people, but like, yeah. you know, here and there, there was good crowds here and there. Yeah, so. for sure. At, at least with us, I think with you guys too, it seemed like in every town there was at least a few people who were like really genuinely stoked that we were there too. Yeah. You know? yeah. It wasn't just like every night we were playing to a few people who didn't even know what was going on. Like there were some people who maybe didn't know our bands or whatever, but then even when there's just like one or two people who comes up to you after the show and they're just like, they know your songs and you saw them rocking out yeah. and like, that just makes it all worth it. Totally. Like, Dude, I'm so glad you came out, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it was really cool. Yeah. How did this tour come to be? Do you have any other touring plans? Um, well, this tour came to be, uh, we wanted to get out there. Like, you know, we kind of want to be on top of our game. Um, our album was done, our drummer had moved down, and we just wanted to get out there because we had nothing else to do, really. Um, so we hit up our AR guy, Steve, and he recommended that we get in touch with um, Aaron and Seven Horns because, you know, they were kind of in the same ballpark. They had an album that was coming out. Um, they wanted to get out there and get active and so like we just you know hit them up and met up for lunch or whatever and talked yep. about it and everything seemed really cool we got along and so we just kind of went from there i guess yeah it was really the label they said it kinda... yeah well yeah it was the label that sort of put our two bands together for this but then a friend of mine who had had some experience booking and stuff like that and he's um you know he's, he's got enough knowledge to sort of put a tour together and that's kind of what he's aspiring to do is you know, a booking agent or whatever so he helped uh he helped really book a lot of these dates, and we were in contact with him as far as what's good and what's not, and what the routing should be like, and all that. So, um, yeah, in a lot of ways, this is kind of a do-it-yourself tour. You know, I mean, we're both young bands, we're both trying to get just get out there, and like I said, just just go, you know, go actually do something and really, really support our bands on the road. And so, a lot a lot of this tour is just kind of establishing that presence and just making it, you know, you know, 
putting our foot in the door and make, making it happen. So, um, yeah, it's cool. Good time. Seven horns, seven eyes are assigned to Century Media, stealing Axion R2 through their daughter company, Inside Out Records. How have they been treating you? And do you feel that being signed to a label is essential for a band member? Um, well, I will say Central Media has treated us great. I love the, the people we've worked with so far. I mean, Steve Joe is the guy we really work with more on a day-to-day -day basis. He's He's been awesome, you know, very just straight up about things, tells you how they are, you know, and uh, I, I really feel good working with him. And I met a lot of other cool people on the CM team as well, just, you know, dropping into LA, including on this last tour, hanging out after the show and stuff like that, so... Yeah, so I, I definitely like the team that's behind us. And then um, as far as, um, what was the rest of the question? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel it's essential? Do I feel it's others? essential? My thoughts on that really is like they're, I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, with the internet continuing to grow in prominence and bands able to float their music out there in front of people and stuff, like there are, there are roles that used to be more essential that the label would fill that are less essential than they used to be, but in a lot of the uh, the business aspects of things and like the uh, you know as far as getting uh, you know landing a booking agent or landing people on the business side of things, it's really hard to be visible to those people um, you know without without some people on the inside sort of bringing you up and showing you know, you know saying hey you know check out this band oh, this is our new signing you know here's the record here's what's going on I mean because. Without, without someone who already has that relationship established with those people, um, you know, you're just another band bobbing in the ocean of the internet and you no know, one has any reason to ever pay any attention to them, so. Right, and like like we were just discussing, um, you know, we kind of learned from this first tour, like this do-it-yourself tour, like you can do it yourself, but it's painful, like, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, it's there's a lot of tribulations of getting to the level where you're able to get shows with these bigger bands and have them take you on tour and a label really kind of helps you out once in a while like I know you guys got that great tour coming up with Lumis and that's yep. you know the label probably helped you with that and also Absolutely, you, you yeah. guys knowing Lumis probably helped too yeah and then yeah. us getting to Euroblast is you know all connected through CM and so it's kind of been vital for us for us at least to get overseas like we that's a dream you know like we yeah. want to go over yeah. there so bad and like I can't believe it's already happening. It's a great thing. Yeah. So I mean, I, I have no regret signing to Century Media, and, and I, I can see all over the place. You know, their their fingerprints and their influence, and as far as helping our band get to where we are now, and you know, same with stealing accident. So maybe sometime way down the line, we'll get to a point where labels just won't exist anymore. But I, we're not at that point now. You know. So right now, I'm gonna take advantage of. Um, you know, the internet wherever possible and do the independent things that we can do, but then also, you know, we've got a label there to support us as well, so. It's it's really nice having the one-on-one -on -one expertise too, you know, with these these yeah. people that have done this millions of times, and so like, you know, when things come up, you can go to them and they have advice for you on things, and yeah, they definitely. can hook you up with somebody that does if they don't, you know, so that's kind of nice too. Yeah, definitely. Aaron, you've recently released your debut album, Throws of Absolution. How's the reception been so far, and what's it like to play the songs live? Uh, well, I'm excited it's out. The reception's been really good. Um, if anyone's, you know, paid attention to all the random blogs and reviews and stuff that we're kind of floating around out there online, there's been a lot of positive stuff. I'd say overwhelmingly positive, actually. I mean, probably the biggest complaint I've seen from anyone that's maybe popped up more than once is they thought the vocals were a little too repetitive or whatever. I mean, I can see why people would say that, but at the same time, like... A lot of, I think, a lot of the time in our music, like the death metal growl that JJ really excels in, like we, I don't know, I'm, I'm still really proud of what we've done. So I, I don't really try to take those reviews and really internalize them too much, and I don't, I don't really let them like make me angry or whatever. It's just kind of interesting, you know, like okay, well, yeah, I, I see what you're, you know, I see what you're saying, and you know, who knows what the next record's gonna sound like, you know, I'm just kind of doing my thing. So um, it's been great. It's I'm real happy the album's out. Um, you know. And playing them live, that's the other part of the question. Close the door. Boutros. We're doing an interview. You just ruined this stuff. Welcome, Brandon. Welcome, Brandon. <laughs> I'm seven on seven hours. Welcome, Neil. <laughs> just, yeah, just, it won't be much longer. This will have to be edited, of course. Um, as far as playing the songs live, uh, before this tour, it had been it had been actually over a year since we'd played live. Um, 
some of the guys in the band no longer even live in the area, so you know we can't can't rehearse on a weekly basis, can't just play local shows just just because we feel like it. So we all got together, rehearsed, you know, for a couple days, and then went out and just did it. And um, I I really love playing live. You know, I, I definitely you know even though we don't play live as often as we used to. Um, you know, getting into this new season of supporting the album and touring and stuff like that, like I'm, it's something I'm really looking forward to. And um, you know, each and every song I think is there's there's something about it that's like just really fun to play in, in a live setting. And just it's just a different it's just a different feeling, you know. But um, I still feel like that passion goes with songs playing in live too. So I'm looking forward to doing more of it. I love it. So. Very good, Josh. You've been working on your debut full-length album, Moments, for quite a while, and it was supposed to be released last year. Why the change of plans? Do you have a release date for the album yet? Well, um, the album's been done for quite a while now, actually, and uh, we originally, before signing, had hinted that we wanted to release it last year, um, but, you know, since hooking up with uh, Steve and Century Media, you know, they, they had wanted to hold on to it for a while so that we can get out there and promote before you know, we released it because we were originally going to do it as like an internet release kind of a, kind of a thing. Um, so that really swayed our our decision to release it last year. You know, and it has been a long time, but at the same time, like we have a lot of things coming up at the end of this year that are really going to put our name on the map, and I think that's more important for us right now in order to keep us to continue releasing albums. Um, we're already done writing second album, um, discussing where we're going to record it, maybe here. <laughs> And uh, we're working on, we're writing the third album now, and we've been doing that for quite a while. So, um, you know, it is a long initial delay, but I think it's going to pay off in the end. Um, you guys are so busy. I mean, no matter what's happening, it's not like you're just sitting around like, yeah, maybe we should release it now. It's like, you know, you're not going to for sure. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What can we expect from the album? How will it differ from your EP? Will it include any songs from your previous releases? Um, yeah, the EP is actually a part of the concept of the album, so they will be included. They've been remixed and remastered, though. Uh, but really, the album just pushes the envelope in both directions. I mean, there's you know more soft and melodic parts, but at the same time, there's heavier and more crazy parts, too. So um, the EP was designed to give you a taste of all the facets of the album. Um, and I think that it did that pretty well because each song is kind of its own thing and people are probably confused by that. Like, oh man, this band's so melodic in this song, but they're really heavy in this one. And I mean, that's kind of our thing. We, you know, we explore lots of different regions of music with our, with our metal. <laughs> yeah. Of metal. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played any of the new songs live? Yeah, we've played several. We've played Solar Moments and we actually have an intro track that's going to be the first song on the second album. Um, it's going to be reworked on the album, but we've been playing it live. How was how were they received? Oh, people love them. Uh, <laughs> some of the people that know us a little bit more personally, you know, come out and they already know the words and stuff to these songs. Like it's pretty cool. Um, there's a really awesome solo that I enjoy playing at the end of Solar that you know I get really into. So people like really vibe off of it and stuff. Um, people have come up to us and told us that they really love the beginning of the moments because it's really crushingly heavy. So I think they're very well received, and we can't wait to like unleash them in a uh, album format. <laughs> Aaron, yep. you released your self-titled EP in 2007, and then a demo in 09. The difference is striking. It almost sounds like a different band. Yep. What happened? <laughs> this is an interesting question, because I think I've written about this in one interview, but never really been, been asked, like, just to, to talk about it. So, I don't know. I mean, basically, really, the gist of it is that in 2007, you know, I was like a 20-year-old kid, 21. I had just barely started writing metal at all i had just been getting into metal you know maybe a couple years prior so i don't know i mean so in 2007 i was just a very inexperienced fan slash songwriter of metal you know like i i loved kill switch engage at the time and i still have a lot of respect for those guys and great players and whatnot but i don't know i mean my tastes have just changed over the years and stuff so um you know i i guess if, if someone listens to what we did in 2007 and then they uh compare it to now, like, yeah, there will be that striking difference, but I would just encourage them, you know, hey, keep in mind, in 2007, that was, like, some of the, the first metal I've ever written. I was very young and experienced at it, inexperienced. Um, so, you know, by the time we came to uh, the 2009 kind of demos that we just floated out there on MySpace and stuff, like, it's just this total reinvention of, like, you know, what good metal should be, basically. 
was just kind of like, hey, you know, I, I liked the 07 stuff. It was fun while it lasted, but, you know, let's move on. I mean, I'm in a different place to visit it, so that's, that's really all it is. Just a progression of uh, my own tastes and my own songwriting abilities. Alright. I just noticed that you have two Redeemer CDs. I do have two Redeemer CDs. <laughs> it might be all they ever released, and I own them yeah. both. <laughs> a library <laughs> of history in this room. <laughs> I have several lit albums, too. If you'd like to borrow them, I will let you. <laughs> Maybe. Alright. Still, still with Aaron here. The gap between the demo and the album is a lot smaller. Presumably because the songs are a couple of years old. How come it took so long to get it out there? And have you been working on new material in the meanwhile? Well, the demo, yeah, the demo was never really considered an official release. That was more just like, hey, you know, we're, we're so far removed from what the songs that people already knew, the, the, the 2007 EP type stuff. We're, we're, we're quite quite a ways removed from that. And we just really felt like, hey, everyone's got to be able to hear what we're at least doing now, you know, even if they're not real studio recordings. Let's at least people you know, let's at least let these people know, like, hey, this is this is what we're doing. It's different. Enjoy. You know, it's free. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there, there definitely wasn't as big of a hop between that and the album. And, it, you know, it took a while to get the whole album recorded and then signing the contract with CM and finding a new singer. Like, there's just a lot of, just a lot of stuff in that whole process of getting from, you know, from demo stage to, to album release stage. And so, not all of that was in our control, but, um, yeah, so... It took a while, and uh, I, I don't have much else to say about it. That's just kind of that's kind of that transitional phase. But as far as, as new songs, yeah, I do have some new songs written. Probably about five of them, totally complete. Um, no vocals yet on there, but uh, and then lots of other random little riffs and pieces of songs and stuff like that. That's something to get kind of worked out. Um, so yeah, so I mean, even even though there's been such a wait with. Uh, Current album coming out, there's there's new stuff in the pipeline too. You know, it's, it's hard to just like turn off the, the creative switch for a few years at a time. Like, that's just not something that really happens. You know, like, just randomly I'll be inspired to write something and then I have to go write it. So it's better to get that out now than just try to you know do nothing for a few years and come back and expect expect myself to just be like on the way I'm in the series. So, you know, I'm ranting. <laughs> How closely do you guys follow the progressive metal scene? Are there any releases you're looking forward to? How about it? Um, I've been kind of far removed the last year, just being so focused on you know my own band, which has been you know pretty uh, intense. Uh, but some of the releases that have come out recently, like I, I really respect Vulgarto. Like I can't believe the sound that they've created compared to what they originally released with their their little EP, I guess. It was just a complete different style, and like I think they shocked a lot of people, and I really respect that, and I really dig it. Um, there's a lot of groove in that. I'm really looking forward to Monuments' release, um, just because I've been following them for a long time. Tesseract's ne next album, um, Apple's kind of sent clips here and there, and it's going to be awesome, I think. Um, so those are some of the things that are like on the lower key. Uh, you know, the mainstream progressive, like I wouldn't consider it progressive, but like Gojira's new thing. I'm That's really gonna be rad. Too. Yeah, I agree. Gojira. Anything, and then Devin Townsend has a new album coming out, like Epic Cloud. Yeah, Epic That's gonna be amazing too. Pronounce it. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. So the fall this year, I think. Yeah, September I can't something. believe how fast he writes. His yeah. inspiration is nuts. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I have anything to add to that, honestly. I mean, I'm sure there's some other stuff coming out this year that I'm just drawing a blank on. But yeah, Gojira and Devin Townsend for sure. Those are two very, very high up on my list that I can't wait to. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to a new Opeth album. <laughs> True, I, I have no idea what Michael's going to do next. It's yeah. going to be good too, but if anybody does. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> sure. Alright. What's your take on the gent scene? Stealing Axion are usually considered a gent band, but Seven Horns, Seven Eyes are rarely associated with the term. Even though there's obviously some Shiva influence in the music, do you consider yourselves part of it? I guess I'll go first. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I yeah, like like you said, there's some kind of obvious gen influence a little bit in the seven horn sound, but I try to not lean too heavily on it when I write. And I mean, everyone in the band, myself included, we have a, a very wide range of taste that goes a lot, you know, way beyond just just gent or whatever. So I don't know. I mean, I start I started really loving Meshuggah way before like gent was a thing. You know, like I, I thought Polyrhythm was awesome before before everyone else did. You know, so. 
I don't know, like, I, I try to not lean too heavy on it, but at the same time, it's just natural to, like, want to fit a little bit of that in there, you know? So, um, I don't know. I mean, on the new stuff I've been writing, I, I feel like there's even less of that gen stuff going on. There's, there's some in there a little bit, but I don't know. I'm not really too worried about, like, oh, I need to fit this scene, or I don't want to fit into this scene. I just kind of do whatever feels right, you know? And as my tastes evolve, my songwriting does too, so... Yeah, as for us, um, I know that we're more a little bit more similar to a lot of the bands that are grouped into the gen scene than I guess that we would be grouped in. Um, we're really trying to push for a more progressive style than uh, polymetric metal style. I mean, we, you know, we have a lot of groove in our music, and that's because we enjoy the groove in music. So that's kind of what we we would strive for. Um, the types of you know chugging and the types of chords and like the chord progressions and stuff that we use are because we enjoy them and like that's what comes natural to us and all of us have kind of grown up listening to classic prog and metal and of course like Meshuggah and Gojira and Tool and stuff and that kind of stuff just lends to this style so easily when you're yeah. just writing you know it's just it seems like everybody grew up listening to kind of the same influences and that's just kind of the product of that you know yeah. 